um, yesterday we just kind of started talking a little bit about DNA and genes and female types and genotypes. And then today and the next few days, the rest of this week, and probably after we get back, we'll go deeper into genes and genetic traits and the Putnam squares and all that. So today we're going to start with what is DNA. And we have some stuff on this one that we take notes on, and we'll take notes on the others. Today we're just going to do this one video, so it's going to take you a little longer to do your oh. test skills. Wow! Look! Amazing! And I know, just like yesterday, that this is kind of oh, maybe immature for y'all, but DNA. if y'all have not talked about Where's DNA that? at all, it's easier to start at the very beginning and break it down in more simple terms, which is what this video does, kind of like yesterday's video did. And what is that? Let us explore it in today's episode. Zoom in. DNA, short for deoxyribonucleic acid. It All right, so there's what DNA stands for, deoxyribonucleic acid. The majority of people in the world will only refer to it as DNA. You will not hardly ever hear it called this, but you need to, um, but I need to introduce it so that you do know what it is, what the word is, or that you had it introduced to you, okay? DNA is considered a molecule, or the acid is considered the, is a molecule. Did everybody get that big long word? Caitlin? DNA, short for deoxyribonucleic acid. Acid is a molecule, a group of atoms stuck together in the shape of a double helix. Okay, so DNA is considered a molecule. It's a group of atoms stuck together, which is what a molecule is, which we learned that last year. And um, it takes the shape of a double helix, which is what they call this. This is considered a double helix, okay? drawing on your notes if you like it. Into it. Which is like a beautiful ladder that's been turned and twisted many times into a spiral. It's the genetic code that determines uh, DNA is your genetic code. DNA is the genetic code. DNA is the genetic code. It's the genetic code that determines that determines all your characteristics. That's your characteristics inside and out. All your characteristics is determined by your DNA. And we get part of our dad's DNA, half of our dad's right, and half of our mom's. <coughs> How many chromosomes do we get from our dad? Mm -hmm. Huh? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yes. So how many do we get from mom? How many do we have all together? How many pairs do we have? 23. It's all the characteristics of a living thing. <coughs> Basically, your DNA is what makes you just the way you are. Oh, me again. Sorry. We are made up of over 3 billion so you as an individual is made up of over 3 billion cells and the majority of those cells we cannot see with the naked eye. 
So you are made up of three billion cells or over. The cells that we got to see, and each cell has a job. And each cell has its own job, and we talked about that last year when we talked about the the cell itself, and we broke it open, and we talked about all the different jobs that the different parts of the cell has, and the cell has its has their own jobs too. Some bunch of cells makes up our bones, some our brain, some our skin, and all together they make our bodies. But how does each cell know? what to do. And that's where DNA comes in and like a boss, it instructs the cell. So your DNA basically instructs or tells the different cells in your body what they're going to do. So the ones that are that have to do with the bones, your DNA tells you that. So if you're the person that ends up tall, then your DNA more cells towards your bones, so your bones are tall. You, you grow farther. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so your DNA is the one that instructs your cells on what to do. Tells what to do. In other words, it is a blueprint for your body. But the important question is how? How these bunch of atoms acts as the blueprint for all the living creatures in the world? Right from insects to cats to humans and even trees. To find the answer to that question, we need to get small, really small, to enter the cell and learn about amino acid first. The amino acid. So amino acids um, is, the, is an essential chemical. Uh, we talked about amino acids last year, son, when we talked about McKenna is an essential chemical inside our body and is often referred to as so in, in the amino acids in our body they refer to sometimes as building block you need to know that amino acids come in 20 different shapes and kinds so there's 20 different kinds of shape of amino acids in your body okay you don't break them all down and learn all the names to them but you do need to know that there's 20 different types and shapes of um, amino acids within your body. Different shapes and kinds. Your body links these amino acids together in specific ways to build protein. So your body takes your 20 different amino acids and they link them together or put them together. And that's how we came up with our different types of protein. If you remember last year when we were studying McKenna, we talked about how important protein was to our body and how we had some of the protein that we ate helped out with the protein that our body made and that all those proteins, um, there were several, quite a few different types of proteins. And so this is how we get the proteins is the amino acid takes its different shapes and its different kinds and puts them together to form the proteins that our body needs. Jeez. Now, these newly formed proteins, along with other chemicals, combine to create cells. These cells then form tissues that make up your muscles and organs, that when put up together, forms living organisms like you and the bug under your bed. These proteins that build you come in different kinds, nearly millions of them and each has to be formed in a perfect shape to work right as an imperfect shape. So if it, at any time, if for whatever reason, your body makes an imperfect shape, which means also an imperfect protein, then that's when maybe you're sick or maybe um, sometimes that's where our uh, disabilities or defects come from, like the having the two fingers, you know? is from where amino acids weren't put together quite right, okay? It usually doesn't function well. That's why the boss DNA enters and takes control of the situation by telling the amino acid how to make a perfect protein shape so that everything 
right from the cells to organs to any living organism turns out just fine. Let's take a closer look at the model of a DNA. As you can see, it is made of different kind of chemicals shown in different colors and alphabets. All right, so this is our different colors. Um, the colors, depending on, it's kind of like the, the colors are kind of like the periodic table. You know, we studied it last year. And depending on who made the table up, it had, even though it was the same exact table set up the same exact way, it had different colors on it. Y'all remember that? Okay, so on this DNA, anytime you see pictures of it, not everybody uses the same colors, okay? But they will always use the four letters. We're gonna look at those a little bit. Take a closer look at the model of a DNA. As you can see, it is made of different kind of chemicals shown in different colors and alphabets. So it has four different types of chemicals um, DNA does. It has the A, a T, a G, and a C, and we'll learn when we get deeper into this what those four letters stand for, okay? And that's the four different ones you have. And then your body, depending on your DNA, puts them in different arrangements which is how we get our different types of proteins, which makes us, okay? But those are the four. And if you'll notice up here, we have, a, we have different ones and we have each letter has the same color, but they're arranged different. Like here we have an A and a T, and then over here they flipped it, same way here. And anyway, so they're arranged different. Every now and then there might be like a C and a G in between the T and the A, or the A might be with the G. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different combinations there. These letters are the genetic codes present all over the DNA thread, which is very long and stays coiled up inside the nucleus of the cell. Which we learned this last year, but your DNA is found inside your nucleus and it's all curled up in there. So that is where you find your DNA is in your cells. But to convert the amino acid into protein, the DNA needs to interact with the amino acid that lives outside the nucleus in a place called cytoplasm. So it has to leave, at some point, parts of your DNA, which you're going to find out is RNA here in a minute, has to leave your nucleus and it goes and lives inside the cytoplasm and um, goes through the stages of the cell and gets turned into protein. And because DNA cannot leave the nucleus, the cell makes a copy of the DNA sequence in RNA. So once the cell makes a copy of the DNA uh, sections, and then it can leave the, um, that part, it's called RNAs, and that part can leave the nucleus. The DNA set, um, strands and stuff stay in there. They've been converted from DNA to RNA, and those are able to leave the nucleus. These RNAs look a lot like DNA, but are missing one side. So your RNA is only one side of your double hexahexyl, okay? It's only one side. They are smaller and can get through the bows in the membrane of the nucleus and out into the cell and enter into a particle called ribosomes. Y'all remember ribosomes from last year? Mm -hmm. Ribosomes are what built our proteins for us. It is a protein building machine. They read the RNA code three letters at a time. So how they make the protein is going down through the RNA code and they, they read three letters at a time. So they take three letters at a time and put that into a specific um, shape, okay? Remember there's 20 different shapes. And absorb amino acid from their surroundings and stick them together in a chain according to RNA code to form a correctly coded protein. These proteins then go on and do wonders in your body, like building new cells. So, what is DNA? In simple terms, DNA is a molecular blueprint for living organisms. 
All right, DNA is a molecular blueprint. This is the one that you will absolutely need to know, but I might ask you to know this too. In simple terms, DNA. DNA is a molecular, I can't say it, molecular blueprint. Is a molecular blueprint for living organisms. For living organisms, it is a molecular blueprint for living organisms. DNA is that create that create RNA. That in turn form proteins. And the RNA forms proteins. So if we didn't have our DNA, we wouldn't be able to have an RNAs. And if we didn't have our RNAs, then we wouldn't be able to form our proteins. And if we didn't have proteins, basically we wouldn't exist the way we did. That can go on to form the magical thing called life. Trivia times. Did you know every human being shares 99% of their DNA? Okay, so all humans share 99% of their DNA with all the other humans in the world. So the person sitting in front of you, the person sitting behind you, and then this person sitting on the side of you, you and them both have 99% of the same exact DNA. So it's only 1% of your DNA that makes you who you are, okay? That gives you your special characteristics. B shares 99% of their DNA with every other human. Not only that, but you have 98% of your DNA in common. Okay, and then you have 98% of your DNA in common with the chimpanzee, 98%, and so this is where, this goes back to your evolution, which we go deeper into evolution later, but um, that's one reason they think that, or that's one of the pieces of evidence that they use to, when they're talking about us, um, about humans being um, evolving from chimpanzees and apes and stuff, is because they are, they're in our DNA is 98% the same. So that's where that Common with a chimpanzee. No wonder you keep jumping around. <laughs> it's question time. Today's question is, where is DNA found? Do write your answer in the comment section below and hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. That's the end of that. That's all we're going to do on that today. And then now you need to turn into your... Uh, Bell work. Just gonna take you more than Huh? You can turn to your bell work. Thank you.